What's going on guys? I just made my first angel investment online in a company called Everyday. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you guys the who, what, when, where, how, and why I decided to make this investment online. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Ferris Abadi. I'm the co-founder and CEO of MySwimPro. And over the last five years or so, we've built MySwimPro to be a global technology and media company with a distributed team that spans over 10 different time zones. We've raised just under a million dollars in outside capital through everything from venture capital, angel investing, equity crowdfunding. And if you're interested in learning how we raise over $600,000 through equity crowdfunding online through WeFunder, check out the video I did on that topic specifically linked in the description below. In this series, I help entrepreneurs take their business to the next level. And if you have an idea for starting a company, but you don't really know what to do, you've come to the right place because I share the right entrepreneurial mindset and the tips and tricks that you need to take that first step. If any of that sounds interesting, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. And in this video, we're gonna talk about my first angel investment. Please give the video a like, I really appreciate it, and let's get right into it. Now, before we talk about the actual investment and why I decided to invest, and all the evaluation criteria I went through, I first wanna demystify what the concept of angel investing even is. A lot of people ask themselves, what is an angel investor? What is angel investing? And essentially, an angel investor is someone, an individual, who provides capital for an early stage company to support the entrepreneur and or solve a problem or to make some kind of money. So ideally an angel investor is investing to back the entrepreneur who is solving a problem that the angel investor is also passionate about with the idea of getting some kind of financial return at the end. So ideally angel investors are investing for one of those three reasons at least at a minimum and ideally investing in all three of those reasons. Normally the angel investor is the first money in the door into a company. The company is raising potentially a big chunk of money, maybe it's a million dollars. A good portion of that might come from angel investors. Oftentimes the angel investors will be the first investors and that company will go on to raise additional capital for more professional investors called venture capitalists. That's a whole other topic. If you guys are interested, I can go more into that. Let me know in the comments if you guys would like to see something like that. A lot of people ask me, why am I deciding to do angel investing? And I came up with three reasons to sort of back my investment thesis in angel investing. And the first one is that I truly believe in the American dream and the concept that impact that entrepreneurship can have in the world. I truly believe the power of entrepreneurship and that the people who are building companies are the drivers of the economy and can have the biggest impact in the world in any kind of a sector. So I really believe that and my experience as an entrepreneur has led me to see the evolution of how your ideas can come to life and I wanna support other entrepreneurs do that. My second reason is the opportunity to give back to the ecosystem. I've been fortunate to raise online, like I said, through equity crowdfunding, but also through a number of different investment mechanisms and the power of entrepreneurship I truly believe in and I want to be able to give back to the community and hopefully I'm doing a little bit of that in this video and share what I've learned and see how I can help companies grow and be successful. And the third reason is to access a unique asset class. If you think about early stage investing, it's definitely an alternative investment. It shouldn't be your entire portfolio unless you're a professional angel investor, in which case you should still diversify your investments. But for me, it's really a cool opportunity to invest alongside potentially sophisticated professional investors to be the first money into a company that could potentially grow to be really, really big, impactful, and financially really lucrative. So these are my three reasons why I am personally investing. The company I made my first angel investment online is a company called Everyday. It's an education technology company that's helping students prepare for the SAT through what are called micro lessons. Now upon learning about this company, I wanted to do more research and full disclosure, I actually have no relation to this company at all. I learned about the company about a month ago and upon doing my research, it looked really interesting when I saw they were doing equity crowdfunding and I decided I wanted to invest. To learn more about this company, I found out that this company is actually a spin out of another company that the founding team put together in the education technology space. That company was called Veritas Prep, and in 2018, they spun out one of their products called Orion, and that eventually formed into Everyday as a business. This is 2018. Their headquarters in Culver City, and a lot of the team was working on preparing students for the GMAT. They've then pivoted now, and they're really focusing on the SAT with the hopes of helping students prepare for the ACT, AP testing, and of course, anything that has to do with helping students learn in a digital environment. So definitely really, really interesting. The investment terms, it was a safe, 
That's how it was a simple agreement for future equity. If you're not familiar with that, basically it's a way to invest that's really simple given the name and you can set the valuation at a later date at a future price round of financing with a cap of $10 million. If you're interested in learning more about that, let me know in the comments. I can make a video specifically about different types of investment vehicles. If you guys are interested, let me know. And I invested the minimum of $300 into this company. Pretty cool to invest such a small amount of cash into a company that has the potential to grow really, really big. Pretty amazing opportunity. I believe the investment was actually set at 250 as a minimum and then they raised it to 300, whatever. I wanted to get in at whatever the minimum was. And the close date is April 30th, 2020. So if you're watching this video after the date, the investment window has closed, their open public offering is over, and we have yet to determine how much money the company will actually raise in this round. At the time I invested, there were over 800 investors and about $600,000 had already come in. As of recording this video right now, there are over 1,000 investors with like seven days to go. So I'm really curious to see how many investors, but it'll be at least 1,000. Who knows, maybe up to a million dollars in capital raised. So pretty, pretty good stuff. And this was all done on WeFunder. I mentioned this platform a few different times. It's an equity crowdfunding site. It's approved by the SEC. We'll check out the Forum C and as we talk about the different things here that make this a good investment opportunity and why I decided to invest. But it's a great platform. And if you're an entrepreneur, business owner, and you're thinking about raising money online through equity crowdfunding, I definitely recommend it. In fact, if you use my URL in the link below, you'll get a 10% discount on any fees that they take to host your company and anything that you raise. So if you raise you know, $100,000, they'll end up taking a certain percent. I'll give you 10% off if you use my promo. Another shout out, you'll get zero fees up front. So check it out, link in the description if you're thinking about raising money online. That's a little bit of background about every day. Now let's talk about why I decided to actually invest. Now I listed on the whiteboard a few different evaluation criteria that a typical investor is gonna look at. Everything from your problem solution, market, the traction, finances, the team. And I also included some bonuses Insight for me as an entrepreneur, the way I look at these things, given my experience as a CEO of a technology company, which is somewhat similar. And then any advice I have for the team, if they're watching this, if you're a founder uh, or a team member of Everyday, some things that I think you should consider. Of course, I'm only one of over a thousand investors, so take the advice for what it's worth. Now, the problem, it's really important for any company, any investment decision to have a really clean and articulate problem that you're solving because if you just have a technology that's chasing a problem, it's not gonna work out. No matter what stage business, it's gonna end up biting you in the butt. So what I like about this company, it's really easy to understand the problem that they're solving. There is a need for test prep education that is affordable. There's a number of different platforms out there for different types of tests. It can be really expensive and only 15% of students actually use this aid because it's inaccessible and it's too expensive. If you wanna hire a tutor, it can be anywhere from 50, 100, $150 an hour. And that's simply not accessible and it's not fair that there's a big gap between students who have access to that kind of education and that kind of tutoring and students who do not. Everyone should have a level playing field. So that is definitely a big problem we're solving. And the solution, I like three things about it. It's a subscription solution. It's a technology tool, which means it can be scaled out to not just the SAT, it could be the ACT, AP testing, anything you wanna learn digitally. I really like the micro lesson model, 10 minute bite size. We've seen this in other languages. So you know, if you wanna learn uh, language applications, so if you wanna learn Spanish or French or Portuguese or Arabic, there's a lot of different apps that have a similar model. It's gamified. I really like that. Even though I am not the end user, I can understand how it would work. And I really like the potential of that solution. When we're talking about the market, I did mention the problem is worth solving and it's a big market. Digi digital education is growing really, really fast. It's not going anywhere. The fact that we're in a pandemic in 2020 is only accelerating this. And I think the world is gonna be very different here in the next few months, in the next few years. Education technology in 2022 is gonna be completely different than it was in 2020 and 2019. A good example of this, and it's not really relevant for the sake of education specifically, but you can draw some parallels. Zoom, we're all familiar with Zoom. Zoom had 10 million daily active users just a few months ago. Today it has 300 million daily active users and a lot of students are using Zoom for their education purposes. Of course, we're not investing in Zoom and we're not talking about Zoom, but the reason why I bring this up is because that same concept of digital learning is just accelerating right now, given the climate and the environment and what's happening in the world. And this company every day is suited and positioned really, really well to take advantage of that new market opportunity. Uh, the traction, so they've attracted a world-class team. That is actually the number one reason why I'm investing in this company, because this is a team that has proven, been there, done it. 
Yes, it's not the exact same thing, but it's parallel enough that they know what they're doing and they understand the market opportunity and the problem that they're trying to solve better than almost anyone in the world. And that's why they are uniquely positioned to take on this challenge. Again, shout out to the team. I don't know any of them personally, but hopefully I can meet you guys at some point in the future. Great team. They're in beta right now. And in the month of March, I read this, they saw an 839% increase in new accounts created. That is just mind blowing to have that kind of a growth. Now, obviously when you're starting out and you don't have that many users in the first place, it's a lot easier to have a bigger growth number, but 839%, are you kidding me? That's insane. So really good shout out, uh, still super early stage. And I think the valuation and the metrics and everything really show that you can tell it's super early stage. However, I definitely think that they're off to a good start. Just gotta keep moving, keep grinding. If we take a look at the finances, another thing that's really interesting about this company is they have a very clean cap table. You've got the two founders. I would like to see the CEO personally have more equity stake in the company. Uh, looks like it's just the two individuals. However, the cap table's clean, meaning that there hasn't been any investment raised really that I know of. Um, last, or 2018, first year of the company, I saw 326,000 in revenue. I did read into the pivot and kind of shutting down that product, building out a new product. Totally understand that, but the fact that you could make close to half a million dollars, even though you have to shut it down and work on something else, it shows that you can make money, which is really exciting. One thing that's potentially concerning is the burn rate of 115k per month um, looking at the expenses yeah I mean I'd like to see a little bit more conservative uh, expenditure but I understand you got to pay people you got to make stuff happen you recruit a world-class team so I'm assuming that's where most of the expense is gonna go and all, all of this fundraise I'm assuming is gonna go mostly towards product development to the team um, raising venture capital and that next round is gonna be exciting because it's gonna convert ideally my shares to equity even if it's not this first round, it might be another round after that, maybe in 2021 or 2022. Either way, I'm optimistic, and I think if we can keep an eye on this burn and not let it get too out of hand, then you're gonna have plenty of runway and you'll be able to keep moving, which is really exciting. If you guys are wondering where I got all of this information, it's available on the WeFunder site. And when you file a Form C, which has all of the disclosures and everything you need to know about the company, you can dig in all this stuff, the finances, the cap table, prior financing, all that good stuff. Uh, the team, let's talk about the team. This is the reason why I'm investing in the company. Uh, if you take a look at the chairman, Chad, uh, he was the, the founder of Veritas Prep, and this is the company that was sold off. Check out the article on TechCrunch. And while this was not a you know billion dollar headline exit, it was an exit, meaning even if it wasn't the biggest financial gain, this team knows how to build a product that is valuable in the market, that another company sees that value and wanted to purchase it and put it into their own portfolio. For me as an investor to make a return on this investment, something similar would need to happen. And having the experience and knowing how that process works is extremely valuable, even if it wasn't a billion dollar exit. The CEO, Christine, was the chief product officer at that company for the main product that pivoted into this. So definitely a lot of product and business experience there specifically. Um, looks like the head of academics, Laura, has over 10,000 hours you know, teaching people, which is amazing. You know, that 10,000 hour rule, that means you're an expert, that's great. Um, head of operations, Mark, uh, who's the head of sales. He was the top salesperson at this last product. So they really put together an awesome team that knows what they're doing. And I would like to say they have great team market fit. And so this means that we've heard of product market fit. It means, you know, consumers are really jamming with the product. But here we definitely have team market fit, which is the thing that precedes product market fit. So definitely off to a good start there. Now some insights that I have as the entrepreneur looking at it from that lens, uh, the first is obviously that team market fit, which I mentioned. They have a great team that's really, that I believe in and that is why I'm investing. I'm not investing because of the traction. You know, yes, the 839% number is great. If that was 839% of like paying members that are somehow gonna be retained, guaranteed, that would be even better. But the traction's not really there yet. The market's interesting, of course, the problem. I don't really know that much about specifically education technology, but it looks like I know how to evaluate the team and they know what they're doing. So shout out to the team. My second uh, observation or insight is that this company understands why they're doing what they're doing. They believe in what they believe. What does that mean? They believe that everyone should have the opportunity to have proper education regardless of your socioeconomic status. They want everyone to be empowered to reach for their full potential. If that means going to a certain school, achieving a certain score, learning some kind of a material and advancing themselves, 
everyone in the company, it seems like, is on that same page. And if, you're, if you know what you believe and you can communicate as the leadership team what you guys believe in and why you're doing what you do, you're gonna be so much more successful. And I've seen that specifically at our company, my swim pro. We all believe what we believe. I did an awesome whiteboard Wednesday um, on that talk specifically, the golden circle, Simon Sinek talking about leading from the inside, from the center, from why everyone knows what they do and how they do it, but why did they do it? And it seems like this company is on the right track. And I think the closeness and resemblance that I see in this company every day in the product to what we do at My Swim Pro, there's a lot of similarities. We're not education technology, but there's definitely a lot of parallels that we can draw. Three of them specifically, it's education. Yes, we're not an education company, but we're educating people about improving a certain skill. We are guiding them through specialized, personalized workouts rather than education. Uh, it's a technology company, it's a mobile application. Been there, done that. We know about the technology, how important it is, how you can leverage it. And it's a subscription business model with a price point, mind you, that's actually very similar to what we charge. So a lot of parallels that I saw with my Swim Pro in every day and I can evaluate at maybe a different level than the average person. Uh, some advice I have for the team. I think you guys are off to a great start, so keep up the good work. Congratulations on raising a round with over a thousand investors, that's pretty crazy. Uh, the first point of advice is maybe the most important in my opinion, it's to get to market feedback as ASAP, as fast as possible. This is the biggest thing that you guys need to be doing right now because you don't have the traction of so many paying subscribers. In any kind of a subscription business, it's all about delivering value for a subset of the market. Yes, you wanna take over the world with SAT and ACT and AP stuff, but really a lot of that doesn't matter. In the beginning, you need to deliver so much value to a very small segment of the population. And if you can do that, then you're gonna be able to scale it. I would say doomsday is doom and gloom if you move too slow on this. If you take too long, then someone else is gonna come in and do it, or you're gonna burn your reputation. I'd say you have arguably 12 to 18 months from now to completely dominate the best product experience possible. Um, you could, maybe it's six months, I don't really know. But definitely within the next 12 to 18 months, the market's kind of crazy right now and given the, the timeliness of, of what your product does, uh, maybe it's 12 to 18 months. But really you need to nail down that product experience. That product market fit is gonna be huge, do it ASAP. And you need to get paying subscribers as soon as possible because that is how you're gonna define the market and do the product market fit. If you don't have paying customers and you're doing free beta, you're not gonna get the same kind of feedback. So you have to go after the paying subscribers, set that as your North Star. How many paying subscribers do you have? Retained retention, keep them engaged. That is your North Star KPI. Maybe it's something else, but it should be one of your main KPIs and leverage and communicate your investors. You've been able to raise over a thousand from a thousand different people all over the world and your product is more useful for that segment than what we did at My Swim Pro. We have over 300 investors in 36 different countries, which is a lot, but you guys have over a thousand. You have you know, anywhere from maybe three, four, five times as many investors. Leverage them. Try and get your first paying subscribers. Give us something to do. We're waiting for your investor update. Tell us what to do to help the company. Um, and definitely watch the burn. My final advice here, you know, 115K a month is fine given where you guys are at, but it shouldn't creep up too much without the supporting subscriber data. Even if you guys raise a mega round and you know, it's 2022 and you just put 40, you know, 4 million, 40 million in the bank, it doesn't really matter. Keep an eye on the burn, stay lean, stay efficient. The best subscription businesses are profitable all the time. So that's what I advise you guys to do. Reach for profitability. Good luck to the team at Everyday and thank you for letting me be a part of this incredible community to help students all over the world, maybe all in the US, but to help students reach for their dreams, achieve their goals. Definitely passionate about helping you guys do that. If you guys are interested in learning more about investing, equity crowdfunding, let me know in the comments. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a big like. If you want more content like this, subscribe to the channel and let me know what you'd like. As always, stay safe and keep hustling.